I'd say let's get the elephant out of the way just so we can move on. The Nubia Z11 Mini is still running on Android 5.1.1 and I'm pretty sure my reaction back then was kind of the same like yours now. Android 5.1.1, that's way too old, forget it. But wait a second. I contacted Nubia Germany and asked them why. Their answer was kind of an excuse, but also actually not even that wrong. They said our UI is so advanced, we have so many Nougat features and optimizations, we don't really need a newer version. And while I definitely agree on the features, I'm not quite so sure about the rest, because as far as I know, some apps with Android 6.0 introduced a few services they need in order to run properly. And even though I didn't run into any of those limitations knowingly, doesn't mean you won't. But I still think it is worth taking a look at this phone because it has some great qualities after all. And I'd say let's start off with the first one, design and build quality. Because I definitely think it looks really, really nice and beautiful. And especially the in and feel is very great due to all those nice curves. We maybe don't have 2.5D glass, but it still feels kind of nice curved off. And on the back, we actually have a curve and therefore it lies great in the hand. It is still quite compact because it is a five inch with, in my opinion, quite moderate bezels all around, which makes it so nice and premium. It doesn't creak or so really, really well built. The glass, of course, is something that you have to know if you like it or not, but it is coated on both sides and that is definitely great. One thing not so great is the fingerprint reader because in my opinion, in normal use, so many times I just couldn't unlock it just by the weight of the device and it works right now. But during my normal use, it did happen so many times and you kind of have to really put your finger properly in the middle and kind of press. And I'm pretty sure you will see this throughout the review that this is a little bit of an annoying fingerprint reader. Otherwise, we have the camera and flash here that is pretty much flush, which is nice to see. We also have the microphone here, headphone jack, SD card and SIM card tray on the left side. And on the bottom, you can see um, USB type C along with the speaker on the right and the microphone on the left. Buttons for the power button and the volume rock are pretty much placed in the perfect position for me and the sound and feel really, really nice. So great job done here. And we have a notification LED here at the bottom. As you can see, the circle is all the time here, but it glows when the notification is coming. But since this is quite faint, I didn't really see it all that great in normal use. Otherwise we have the capacitive buttons and that's pretty much it. So I definitely like design and build quality a lot. And that's why I would like to move on to the display. But before I'm going to show you off some pictures, let's get into the setting and show you one setting that I really like to see, and that is screen display preference. And what I like here so much is following. We can set the saturation from glow, which is definitely quite poppy, standard and soft, but we can also change the hue, which makes actually quite a difference because you can set it to cool, natural and warm. And in this case, actually warm makes a great job. And now let's move over and check a few pics. And I can definitely tell you that the white point, if set right to your preferences, is really nice. Black levels are good. Viewing angles, I would say, are okay. Maximum brightness, maybe not so much because I only measured 370 lux and compared to other phones with at least 450, 500 to up to even 600 is not that great. So sunlight readability wasn't quite perfect, but I definitely like the colors here because the saturation calibration is really nicely done. Even though I have to say some colors look a little bit deeper than they maybe should. But this doesn't change the fact that I think the calibration and the overall display experience is really, really nice and fully satisfying. And it was actually a really great display and I like it a lot. And that's why I would actually already like to move on to the speaker. The maximum volume maybe isn't all that great. It could sometimes be a little bit louder, but in most cases it's actually fine enough. But what I still definitely like is the balance because it doesn't sound thin or weak or so. So it's quite a nice, rich sound. What is though actually also nice, and I have to show this off, is if it comes to the headphone jack. Because if we go into the settings, go to sound, we have DTS options. And I know a lot of people will like them because we have options to set the bass, the treble for movie, movie and podcast. But my actual tip is turn it off. Why? Because then the actual maximum volume was even better and the sound already was so nicely balanced that I preferred it just off. But it is definitely at least a good one, which is nice to see. And that is all I want to say. Now let's get to the performance. And you can see that I have some little trouble with the fingerprint reader. Now, 
as you can see here, this is the menu button and not the recent apps button. Because if you want to go into the recent apps, you have to long press the back button, which is a little bit inconvenient, and makes things a little bit slower. But I will show you why that is not actually a big problem. Now, let's start a few apps just so we can see how fast it starts. And as you can see, this is actually not slow. It's not super fast, but it's definitely responsive enough. And the usual use of this device was actually quite snappy and nice to see. Now, once this page is loaded, we can check how well the browsing works. And here I can definitely tell you that I was actually so uh, surprised how well the Snapdragon 617 works because I've no I've had it on two devices in the past and it didn't run as well as it does here. So I'm pretty pleased with that. You have some occasional stutters here and there. So it's not quite on a Snapdragon 625 level, which is greatly optimized like on Lenovo and Motorola devices, but this actually performs better than for example, the Asus Zenfone 3 with the 625. So highly pleased here. Very nice daily performance. Of course, there is still a difference to flagships or higher end mid ranges, but this is definitely for this price range, a way more than respectable and actually quite good performance. And I'm really happy to see that, like they said, it, this is just 5.1.1, but so nicely optimized and everything runs so well. Three gigabytes of RAM, multitasking was absolutely fine. So actually really good. And the same goes actually also for games as well. If we take a look at those, you can see that they run with quite moderate frame rates and actually really nice throughout. And this is pretty much on power for Snapdragon 625. I could play all games with, I would say like 25 to 30 frames per second without any really noticeable frame drops. One thing though to mention, the Snapdragon 617 is known to get a little bit warmer. And even though I didn't really get it to noticeably throttle the device heats up and it was quite cold here so if you are in a warmer region you definitely should take care of that because it could happen that the device could actually throttle the 617 is known for that it didn't happen in my experience but it definitely can so just keep that in mind but otherwise you will get a really nice performer for games so you shouldn't worry about that now let's talk about the battery a full charge takes about 2 hours and 20, which is still fine because we don't really have any sort of quick charge option. So what is not that great though is 21% for one of YouTube, which is actually on the lower end of the spectrum from what I've seen so far, which kind of is in line with my battery life estimates because I would expect about five hours in mixed use, maybe four on mobile data and maybe five and a half to maybe six on Wi-Fi only. This is, in my opinion, still a good level after all. Of course, it can't maybe compete with the very best ones these days anymore, but it's still at least decent, if not good. And yeah, there is something that can be better, but this is still fine. Now, let's talk about the software, which in my opinion, yes, with 5.1.1 is outdated. But let me talk about the features because as you can see, 5.1.1, okay, yeah. But in terms of features, it is really great because as you can see here, we don't have an app drawer but that is not a huge problem. We have quick settings, rearrangeable ones, and I definitely like the UI here a lot. What I also like is recent apps to the sites. That is personal preference, but I like it just not the way that you have to access them. But this is actually not a problem because if we just check some features, we have edge adjusters. As you can see here, you can slide on the left, right with some extra functions. And this is nice to see because as you can see here, you can switch the apps. And I've showed this on the Z11. You can also do this and some other things. So nice edge gestures, which I don't use since I use something else for my sites. But we have screen split up. This means like on Nougat, you can already use two apps at the same time. So this is quite advanced after all. At the custom button key, I have to say one thing, I would have really wished for a recent apps button because you can change the menu button, but an additional option to change that to a recent apps button wouldn't have been expected too much. And as you can see, touch just that you have double click to turn on the screen, free to bring a screenshot, which means with three fingers down or up, you can make a screenshot and which is pretty much my highlight is three finger switch setup. Because you can see here, you can move between the apps with three fingers. And I've noticed that I do this on so many other devices that actually don't even allow this option. Then we have dual instance, so you can run two apps with a different account and so on. Sound I already said, we have the DTS options for display. And you can definitely see that we have a lot of features like you would have a NuGet. But as I said, maybe there are some services as far as I know that just need 6.0 in order to work properly. Maybe you won't get all the features of some apps. Like I said, I didn't really run into that, but it is possible, just, just keep that in mind. And 6.0 was announced for this device. Why it's still not here, I don't really know. But I would say let's go and check the cam. And I have to say I'm really pleased with the selfie cam because if you look at this, this is really nice and sharp with a great natural skin color. 
and everything else is just done nicely. As you can see here also, sharp, detailed, right, shutter times were nice. And yeah, nothing else to say here. Same goes indoors. It still maintains to stay very sharp, very natural. So I'm highly pleased with the selfie shooter. If you check here, one low light picture with the flash looks very nice and sharp. Not quite so sharp, but still quite okay. And you will see how well low light holds up a little bit later. But first of all, let's get outside. And as you can see here, a really nice detailed sharp picture. And I have to say, I'm actually highly impressed in this price range for this camera because we get a lot of details. We got a really nice fast shutter and the autofocus worked super reliable. And I just have to say, I did not expect this camera to perform that well because shutter times, autofocus, and everything fits so nicely in and we also get great results because all those pictures look very natural, very detailed. And I had pretty much no bad shots. Pretty much everything turned out nice from the first moment. And even this very small object is nice in focus and detailed with the autofocus. So all is great here. Nothing else I could add. Really, really great. Low light pictures. Now let's look at that. Maybe not perfect, but for this price range, so good low light pictures are absolutely highly respectable because as you can see that still even though i didn't have the, the the steadiest hand this is nice and here you can see of course the selfie cam looks nice what you will see that the transition from darker to brighter passages is a little bit harsh and you will see this here in the next video once again this is where it falls a little bit short like the video in general because even though the video is very smooth it's not very super detailed and sharp so it is a little bit grainy but what I really like is the super smooth and subtle autofocus because everything seems to be in focus pretty much all the time, which is absolutely nice to see. And yes, of course, it is a little bit shaky since we don't have OIS, but still, as you can see here, video looks fine. Absolutely, maybe not great and maybe just not as good as the photos that are really impressive, but after all, highly respectable. And that's why I would say let's already get to the pros and cons so we can cover this up. On the pro side, we definitely have a very beautiful design with a great build quality, a really gorgeous, beautiful display. I can't really say if it's very good or great because it is maybe not super accurate, but it is super beautiful and fully satisfying to look at. Speaker is good, maybe just good, but after all, still should get the job done. We have a pretty good performance. It's of course not a flagship and it's not quite on the premium high or mid-range sector, but for this price range, it actually holds up very well and is better than a lot of them. Battery life is decent, good, but just that. We have a pretty great UI. I really like the great UI here because it is feature packed, even though I have to say outdated. And then we have a pretty good camera in my opinion, generally, especially for photos. And the value on the 32 gigabyte version with around $210 or euros, I can't really find a dollar price is actually quite respectable. Now, what's not that great? In my opinion, it's the fingerprint reader that was a little bit annoying. I just didn't get so used to it in a week. I still had so many instances where just swiping on it, putting it on it wasn't enough. Then we have the low brightness with 370 lux. It is a little bit below average. We have the YouTube slowdown touch. What, that's, what this means is the following. If you are using the YouTube app and you're watching a video and you press the display to get the overlay, in that instance and when it is gone, you have a slowdown of the video. Video itself though plays back just fine. So this is the only minor setback. Then we have just good battery life. These days we just have a lot of phones that are noticeably better. But if you are not a powerhouse user, this still definitely should get you through the day. Android 5.1.1. <laughs> Don't really want to get any further into that. And then we have videos not on par with the photos. So in the end, where does it leave us? If I see this as a around $200 device, I can still definitely recommend it because as you can see, all the qualities are there and it competes with something like an Honor 5C and even P9 Lite. It is a little bit smaller, but therefore more compact, but the qualities are at least on par because build quality can hold up the display, the speaker, maybe not quite so much, but performance definitely, the camera for sure, and the software, even though outdated, is very feature packed. So if you can live with the compromise, if it's not a big problem for you, it is still a recommendable device. And I'm pretty sure, and I don't want to make the sound as an excuse, I get it. Android 5.1 will be a big setback for a lot of people, especially since the security updates are also one year old. But if you are not someone who's really all that crazy about those features and updates and you need the security features and so on, it is 
as you have seen, a great phone. After all, it's not perfect, definitely, and I w don't want to hide that, but you should definitely take maybe a look at it. So this would have been it. If you liked it, thumbs up. Comments down there below. And if you like this more of that, subscription would be pleased to see. Okay, but otherwise, have a nice day. Bye.